The steam sterilizer has a main unit here. This is the electrical part. It has an internal container in which you put your samples to be sterilized. And it has a lid to keep the pressure in. Vacuum grease can be useful because you need a seal here so that the steam does not escape. The container for the materials has a little channel here on the side. The lid has a tube that fits in the channel. So when you assemble it, you have to make it so this can fit in, the, in that slot there. I put a gallon of distilled water in the bottom of the pressure cooker. It takes about an hour for it to heat up to boiling temperature, so you must plan ahead when you're doing this. You'll notice there's a platform here on which the actual container will rest. The controls here, this is the power knob. I've made a little notch here on the side showing you this is where the dial should be. On off switch, this tells you when the heating element is actually heating. To help the seal, I can put the vacuum grease uh, around the rim here. It's best to do this when the pot is cold. These are materials I'm planning to sterilize. I have bacterial broth, growth medium here. I have some solutions that I want to be sterile. I have some pipette tips that I will also sterilize. So I'm arranging my materials inside the sterilization chamber. These lids must be loose. There will be a pressure difference between inside and outside. So let them breathe by loosening the cap. And here I'll, I'll rest the pipette tips in the middle there. I'm carefully putting my sample inside the pressure cooker. I put the channel on the right. So now this tail, I'll thread it into that channel. There are these built-in hooks here which should interlace with the base. And I'll try to get this fairly well centered. These flip up and they have a screw nut so I can tighten them. I don't want to tighten anyone until I have them all in the upright position. And then as I tighten, tighten on opposite sides. Don't make one tight before you've gone all the way around to make them at least a little bit tight. And then I have to screw them down with some force so that I get a tight seal to keep the pressure in. Initially this lever here needs to be up. There's the down position, there's the up position. It needs to be up to allow air to escape. With the lid on, the water will start to boil. Uh, we should see steam appear, well, steam exit from this valve here. And I need to let the steam escape for about five minutes before I close this valve and let the pressure start to rise. This is a waiting game now. Heating is on, valve is open, pressure is reading zero, meaning it's the same. It's one atmosphere inside and outside, which will be the case as long as this valve is open. I'm just waiting for the steam to appear. Now steam is appearing at the valve. You can hear the hissing. You can see some uh, droplets of water being expelled by the steam pressure. So I have to let this happen for just a couple more minutes. Five minutes total of steam escaping is, is recommended. So now the steam has been coming out for five minutes. I'll close the valve. That stops the flow of steam. So now the steam will be contained within the pressure cooker. 
this dial here will start rising because the pressure is now building up within. I need to get the pressure into the green zone here for about 30 minutes. It's been 8 minutes since I closed the valve and we're about halfway to the green zone now. I'm hoping another 10 minutes will get us there. Here you can see uh, I'm not close to the green zone. I was a little closer a couple minutes ago but the thermostat down here turned off the heating coil so I, I moved the dial a little bit so that we can get back to the green zone. Notice the, uh, the heating coil is on. So this is where I have to watch it and babysit it and make sure it stays hot enough but not too hot. About five minutes after I turned it up uh, we're now in the green zone. You can see that the light down here is still on so now I need to make sure we don't go into the red zone up here. Don't want to get to the red. So I'm just making a wee adjustment here. Light went off so I'm no longer heating but I have to make sure that as this pressure starts to drop I don't let it drop too far so I'll turn this knob back up maybe. So here uh, it's dropped just below the green zone so I turned it up again get this red light on. This next part of the video will be a fast motion example of how I adjust this to keep this in the green zone. Off. So you can see it takes pretty much constant attention. I have been grading some papers, but I look up every minute. That's my timer saying this has been sterilizing for about a half hour. So now I'm ready to release the pressure. When I do this, it will, it will fill the room with stench. So I, I will turn on the exhaust fan before I flip the valve. Just dropping here, but it does take a while to get back to one atmosphere. Everything's hot. So now the pressure is back down to one atmosphere. I can open this Oop, carefully, and this is still very hot. So these gloves might be helpful. And now I can open the lid. And retrieve my materials from inside. Be careful so I don't spill. So here's my sterilized materials. And they're still hot so I'll just let them cool down before I take them out. <laughs> 